Hey everybody, I'm Sam from Sam Can Do, and if you don't know me, I'm a Rebel Creative and I love Glowforge. I'm one of the original Kickstarter owners, and welcome to class two of how to turn your Glowforge into cash. If you haven't watched the first class, we talk about what you're gonna make with Glowforge. Maybe you already know, but that video has some helpful tips on how to uh, get started. But in this video, we're gonna say, once you have your product, once you have some of the things that you wanna make, where do you sell it? How do you make money? Um, this might be a very basic thing for some of you, but maybe you'll learn about some things that you didn't know because I swear my most secret and interesting place is saved for the very, very end. Okay, so stay tuned. First thing I'm gonna say, craft markets, craft fairs, these things are everywhere. There's an app even called Vendors where you can look up different markets that are in your area. These are such an easy place to sell goods because it's very low tech. You don't have to, you know, open a website. You don't have to do marketing and, and you know, tell people your story. You can literally show them. Now you wanna make your stuff look good, um, but at the same time, it's just really accessible and it's cool because you get to make face on face, face on face contact. You get to make face to face contact with people um, and you can show them who's making their goods. You can tell them exactly how you made them, what you're doing. I love in-person markets. You can usually find them online and um, you know, you don't have to worry about shipping items. Sometimes shipping can be such a nightmare. It's just really nice and easy to sell online. If you, and then you could use like a little square swiper, you know, or people are using like Venmo and PayPal, all that kind of stuff too. So in-person markets. Um, number two is an e-commerce website. You can open up like a Squarespace or a Shopify website and host your own um, place where people can go and shop. Now, some of the reasons I don't recommend this always at first to people is that you have to pay a monthly fee for that, which is not always reasonable or um, realistic for someone who they're just starting out. If you don't have the budget for it, that can be a lot. Not to mention, you have to get people to that site. So you have to have conversions. So that means you need social media, some something to market to get people to your website. It's not just gonna be word of mouth unless you're like very, very, like have so many friends. I don't know, that's just a lot. And not to mention, you have to learn how to use that e-commerce website. You're learning shipping, all those things. I will say between Square and Shopify, I've used both. Square is very easy but Shopify seems like they have more plugins and more growth opportunity. That's just how I feel about it. I've used both, both are fine. Um, I don't know what the square shipping situation is. In the past, I had to add like an outside shipping situation through uh, ShipStation, um, but in the, the last time I was using Shopify, it was very easy, kind of set it up. Um, it does take some learning, but you can figure it out. Um, the other thing is something like Etsy. Etsy's great because yes, they do charge you a little bit for your listing. They take some of the money out of your uh, what you're selling, but it's already existing. People already go to Etsy to shop. You can jump right into their searches. You don't have to be like approved. It's super simple. They make everything really, really easy. It syncs into QuickBooks even if you use QuickBooks to do your bookkeeping. Um, I have an Etsy shop right now. It's working for me. It's fine. Um, and like I said, people are already searching on that website. Now, that being said, you have your competition right next to you, um, but it's still a really easy place to get started. Um, number, another way is directly on social media. There's now different options with like Instagram, Facebook to actually have like a way to buy through that. I don't know, a, I don't know a ton about that, but there's lots of information out there on how to do it. If I find a really good video that I like, I will put it down below. But a lot of people have success selling on lives. And there's an amazing service called Comment Sold. It's kind of expensive, but if you're really serious about this and you want to get product moving, um, Comment Sold is a very, very cool, it's usually like niche into the likes Southern boutique world, um, but it's a way where basically people can watch your lives on Instagram or on um, Facebook and they just say, like sold, like I want that item and it automatically invoices them, automatically sends them a thing once they sign up one time. And it's very, very cool, very interactive. That's a very interesting way. Now, one of the last ways that I'm gonna share of a place that you can sell, so we've gone over in-person markets, e-commerce, um, and like Etsy store, social media, but wholesaling. I feel like people sleep on wholesaling because it seems like something that's not attainable because there's not really a lot of information out there, at least when I was doing it, how to get into boutiques, gift shops, and even stores like Target or Bed Bath & Beyond. Well, there's a few different ways that you can do that, but the amazing thing about wholesalers is wholesalers will expect a 50%-ish off price of your MSRP, your, re your retail price. So like if I was selling, um, you know, this art thing that I made, I'm not. Um, and I say, uh, this is gonna 
sell retail for $50, the wholesaler is gonna wanna purchase that from you at like $25 or something like that so that they can sell it for $50. So you wanna keep in mind with your price margins, you wanna be prepped for wholesale, but you know, you could sell three of these at a market for a $50, but what if a wholesaler came and bought 200? Now, not everybody can make whatever they're making at that kind of scale, but what if you have a, fr I have friends with Glowforges. I could like hire them out at that point. There's ways that you can grow your business and wholesale is really, really, really exciting. Um, now, how you get into wholesales, there's a few different ways. You could do a website wholesaling, which is like fair.com. You have to apply. I've been rejected with different projects that I've been working on before. Um, but fair is a place where people can literally search just like Etsy. They can find you. They can buy directly from there. You can set up your minimums. Um, they actually have like a net 90 situation, which is really good for buyers. Fair is a very, very cool website that you can sell on for wholesale. There's others as well, but I don't, I'm not familiar with them. The next thing is you can do cold pitches and samples. You can literally go to a local boutique. You can bring a couple samples that you give them for free. And I would suggest an eight by 11 or eight, you know, a computer piece of paper with all of your product pictures, prices, the wholesale price and the MSRP and all your contact information. Don't make it more complicated than that. They would call that a line sheet. That in the past has worked for me. Couple samples, that line sheet with maybe a card saying, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm a local business and you know we're wanting to get into some stores. Let them know where you're being sold at. If you're not being sold anywhere, I would say, I'm not being sold in any stores in this region right now, so you would be the first. They don't wanna sell that, you know someone's stuff that's gonna be right next door. And they might feel like, ooh, this is the first opportunity, cool make sure it looks nice even if you're not like a huge packaging person put it in a nice box make everything look really clean if you can't make it fancy make it simple and clean um, and then the last place is actually a wholesale market now this is a big financial investment i've had it be successful for a brand that i ran in the past but a wholesale market is a place that you go. It, it, the whole situation could cost you anywhere from three to $10,000, depending on how much money you have, how much money you're willing to spend and how fancy you want your booth to be. But basically you can get a booth where other, where stores, big stores and little stores alike, I'm talking Ace Market, Target, Bed Bath & Beyond, um, Wayfair, people who are buyers for these companies are walking around looking for brands to put in their store. Now, if you are, a baby baby brand new brand and you have nothing you know you're you don't have enough money to make your setup look really professional they might say well look they they're not ready for someone like us but if you can throw something together in a 10 by 10 space that makes you seem at least somewhat professional with a really good display there's tons of display you know just think of a craft fair but next level um you could do this. I mean, it's a really, really cool and unique opportunity. They have markets in Dallas, Atlanta, LA, Las Vegas, New York, Austin. Um, I've been to the Atlanta market. I've been to the Dallas market. I've heard about the other ones. I've heard about New York now. There's a lot of different types of markets, but um, all of them have different niches, but it is something, if you can even go, if you have a business license, I think you can actually sell up to go as a shopper. Um, but it's a really, really cool experience. And if you make, like, I remember one year I made like 11 good wholesale partners that ordered like every single, like every other month. And that was so worth it for my business because it was taking us from, you know, having a few different things, um, being purchased here and there to these big orders of thousands of dollars at a time. That is a really, really cool idea, which is going to, you know, speak to you on what you make and, you know, how you make it because not everybody's products are going to work for wholesale, but it's a really, really niche way. I think to like get a lot of money moving. If you're trying to make this a business that brings in a lot of income and gets your name out there to a lot of different people, because when you see your stuff in a store across, you know, a different city, a different state, like that's your brand getting out there. So I wouldn't sleep on wholesaling and don't let your own ability stop you. You can hire other people to make the good that you design. Like there's lots of other ways, but yeah, those are the different places that you can sell your goods. Obviously it's not the full list. If I've missed anything, link down below where people can sell their goods, different wholesale opportunities, and maybe you could help somebody else. Uh, come back for the next class. We're going to talk about uh, how to price your items. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.